Topping today's news, it's been a busy week for Bahamas Air, and today they opened a new office targeting travelers in the southwestern community. We get an update on the world relays from the local organizing committee. Prime Minister Davis and former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, they weigh in on the questionable ankle monitoring system and the Supreme Court rules on the Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association court battle. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jerino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. Today, Bahamas Air opened a new ticket office at the Southwest Plaza, Carmichael Road East. Director of Aviation's Dr. Kenneth Romer says the ticket office strengthens existing markets and expands new markets as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Bahamas Air continues to make us very proud. Fifty years later, uh, they continue to rank high among our national assets. Uh, they continue wherever they go and we see the flag of our country being represented on Bahamas Air's tail or we sometimes are returning from other areas and other countries and we come into the airports. There was a sigh of relief when we were able to see faces that looked like us and voices that sound like us and persons who demonstrate that it is truly better in the Bahamas who live out this model that they just don't fly there, but they live there. Chair of the Board of Directors, Tanya Pratt, says today is an indication that the airline is going in the right direction. One day we will be, Bahamas Air will be the company, a force to be reckoned with. Dr. Roma, we are totally vested in Bahamas Air as a board. And we see the good in our staff, we see the potential in the company, and together with our executive management team, who I love so dearly, and they all know that, one step at a time, one day at a time, and with the help of Almighty God, we will, not we shall, we not we may, but we will attain our desired goals. And clearly today is an indication that we are going in the right direction. The new Bahamas Air Ticket Office opens at Southwest Plaza, is now officially opened for business. As the debate surrounding the amendments to the Bail Act rages on in Parliament and throughout the country, Prime Minister Philip Davis has an announcement that there is another pressing concern for the government and the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Weak and faulty electronic monitoring systems. Prime Minister Davis revealed this week that the company managing the ankle monitors, Metro Security Solutions, will have their contract under review after two recent incidents of individuals on bail being able to remove their monitors. The discussion that we've had with the Commission of Police is that we need to review the races we have with that, with that company and to determine whether or not they are, they are fit for purpose going forward. Um, it's unacceptable that we rely on uh, you know, the, the bracelets, the morning bracelets, were, were embraced for a specific purpose. Uh, and that is to monitor persons out on bail, to ensure that they do not commit further offenses, be able to track them, to ensure that they'll be, be around for their trial. Um, what we're hearing is that that, that is failing. And um, failure is not an option in our fight against crime. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernanda reports that a male that was recently arrested was found to have removed the monitor with only a paper clip. He says police have communicated with Metro Security Solutions and are learning from the recent incidents using them to reverse engineer the monitor's weaknesses. One of the uh, individuals that we arrested, uh, we had him do a demo on how he got his monitoring off. And we recorded it. And I had a meeting now with the uh, company uh, so that they could uh, view that device now to strengthen that, to ensure that it don't happen again. But it, it'd be amazing if you were to see how easily that individual was able to take that off just with a paper clip. 
Metro Security Solutions received the contract for the electronic monitoring system in December of 2021. The company has faced scrutiny over the years after multiple reports incidents uh, of people out on bail with monitors removing them in order to either skirt trial or reoffend with criminal activity. Several weeks ago, former Prime Minister Dr. Hubin Minnis addressed concerns about the Metro Security Solutions ankle monitoring system, the company that oversees that system when people are on bail. Dr. Minnis expressed his disappointment with the company. He says it's not doing their job effectively. On Wednesday at the House of Assembly, Dr. Minnis told reporters that the Davis administration ignored his concerns and now criminals remove their bracelets and roam freely. It was a very concern concerning issue within the Bahamas where um, criminals are removing um, the, the ankle bracelet and going about their own business or doing what they wanted to. And I, I um, brought up an example. I did not want to go into details as to what happened. But this is happening and the government had ignored what I said then. So there was a two to three months lapse since then. So the question is now, how many individuals would have been involved in criminal activity in spite of having a bra ankle bracelet but leaving the ankle bracelet home at their, at their houses and subsequently go into the community and do um, engage in criminal activity? Dr. Minnis also said the government broke the contract with the former security company and instead gave the contract to another company that seems to be incapable. Which meant had the government acted on what I said two, three months ago, then that those grouping could have been dealt with appropriately. But the government must take the contract from the existing contractor because it's quite evident that they cannot manage it. It calls for advanced and rapid changing technology. You have to keep up with the technology. The system that was in place under ICS had cell phone connectivity um, to the, the ankle bracelet also. So they could have warned the criminal or the individuals in advance that you are violating and the police will be for you in a matter of minutes. It had all the technological advances attached, but the government had broken that particular contract and given it to a contractor, as far as I'm concerned, who don't, do not know how to manage it appropriately. However, Prime Minister Philip Davis revealed on Monday that the contract with the current company once again is under review and no decisions have been made at this time. And finally in this segment, as the Davis administration threatens arbitration with the Grand Bahama Port Authority, leader of the official opposition and the free national movement, Michael Pintard is offering another critique of the government's handling of this dispute. Mr. Pintard spoke candidly outside the House of Assembly on Wednesday, revealing that he believes the government's attempts to regulate and acquire the Grand Bahama Port Authority have been misguided, harming the investment potential for the country. We do not accept that this administration will do any better as one, the regulators of the, uh, of the activities in Grand Bahama and Freeport in particular, and secondly, we don't have any, any confidence that their approach to trying to wrestle away the assets is in the best interest of, of our country. It sends the wrong message to international investors uh, that, you know, the governments of the Bahamas can participate in hostile takeover. And the Davis administration has created great uncertainty locally and internationally around uh, what investors could expect if they invest in the Bahamas in general or in Grand Bahama in particular. Mr. Pintard called the government's initial approach to the Grand Bahama Port Authority dead on arrival, stating that arbitration should have been the government's first option. Mr. Pintard suggested that the government has been hypocritical. He says the government is also neglecting to follow the Hawksbill Creek Agreement by publicizing all of their concerns. They should have, from the beginning, engaged in one, private conversations with the GBPA and all of the stakeholders, Secondly, if there was a problem with those private conversations, they could have gone to arbitration. They skipped the conversation, they skipped the discussion of arbitration, and they went straight to threatening to take over. Now that they realize that that approach is dead on arrival, they have now retreated to arbitration, which they knew from the beginning is a provision that is built into the Hawksbill Creek Agreement whenever the government and the Port Authority are at an impasse. 
So, so again, it's the wrong approach by the Prime Minister, aided and abetted by his ministers, and most especially the chairman of the PLP, uh, whose, whose voice does not at all in, in Grand Bahama resonate. The Member of Parliament for Marco City says, although representatives from the island of Grand Bahama have voiced concerns similar to the government, the responsibility is on the Prime Minister to refine his approach to the Grand Bahama Port Authority. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.